So in this video, we're going to connect our little Nest.js application, which we worked on in the previous video, which you should definitely check out, link below the video, of course, we'll connect this application to a database, to MongoDB. Now for that, in case you don't know what MongoDB is, I do have a link in the video or two links actually where I explain what MongoDB is and also where I compare MongoDB, which uses a NoSQL solution to SQL databases. So that might be helpful. So for the rest of this video, I'll just assume that you know what MongoDB is. And for this video, I will use their cloud solution, MongoDB Atlas. That simply means that I get a fully managed database in the cloud you don't need to pay anything for that, for the basic version of it at least. Of course, there are paid versions, but for the basic version, which will suffice for this video, you don't have to pay anything. And MongoDB Atlas simply is very convenient to use. Make sure that we don't have to install anything locally and so on. Now, here I'm already logged in with my account, which I created up here with sign in. And there you can create a new cluster and you can basically leave all the defaults or choose the free tier settings wherever you're prompted so that you get a cluster which you can run for free, again, for the things we're going to do here. Now, a cluster simply is like your cloud database or actually a collection of databases to, to be concrete. And we can connect to this cluster from inside our Nest.js application now. Now, for connecting a node application to MongoDB, be that a local MongoDB instance or MongoDB Atlas as it's here, you got two main options. Version one is that you use the official driver. You can find that driver by simply Googling for MongoDB Node.js and what you'll find there in the end is this MongoDB package, which is the official MongoDB driver. And you can use that in any Node app and therefore also in a Nest.js application and that would allow you to manually connect to the database and then run queries against the database. Definitely something you can do, not bad, but of course it means you have to write all queries manually. If you want to insert something, you have to write the full query manually. Um, if you want to fetch data and so on. There is a more convenient way of doing that and that's the way I will use here. We'll use a package called Mongoose and you can find the official docs on mongoosejs.com. Mongoose is a Node.js package which wraps the native driver, so which wraps the MongoDB package we just had a look at, but gives you more convenience functions. To be precise, it's a model-focused package where you work with models, which in the end are JavaScript objects, and then you can save something to the database through these objects or get some data from the database with the help of these objects. You can check out the official docs to learn all about this package, and this is the package we'll now use as well. Now, for that, we first of all need to install it. So here in the command prompt or terminal in your project folder, you can simply run npm install dash dash save, and then I will install Mongoose, but there is another package which I'll install. There is a Nest.js wrapper, so I will also install at Nest.js slash Mongoose. Now, this simply helps us use Mongoose in this app. We wouldn't need it. We could technically use Mongoose without this Nest.js package. But with the Nest.js package, we get improved uh, TypeScript support. We uh, can inject things to make our lives easier. So I would definitely recommend using both. Now, with that installed, let's set everything up. And for that, we first of all could connect to the database. That seems like a logical first step. And I'll do this in the app module because you connect to the database by importing something from this at nest.js mongoose package. And that something which you do import there is the mongoose module. The mongoose module can be used to set up a database connection and it makes sense to set this connection up in the app module which is our first module to run and to be loaded because I want to connect to the database as soon as possible when the server starts. So here I'll now import mongoose module and there you call for root, which is a method provided by this uh, module here, a static method, to which you now pass your connection string. And that connection string, if you're using uh, MongoDB uh, Atlas, you can be found here under connect, connect your application, then it's this string here. So I'll copy that string, close that, and then enter this here as a string. Now, a couple of important things about that string. This string includes the username for which you want to connect and the password for this username. And both needs to be managed by you. You can do that here in MongoDB Atlas under database access. 
If you click on that, you see your users. There, I actually want to use this Maximilian user. So I'll change the username here to Maximilian. But of course, you could use any user you want. You just should make sure that it has at least read and write database access. And I'll also set a password, which I'll change after recording this. So no need in copying it. And I'll enter this password here. You could use environment variables if you prefer that. For our purposes here, this hard-coded connection string will do. At the end of this string, you also define the database you want to connect to, because as I mentioned, the cluster holds like a combination or multiple databases. And I'll use Nest.js demo as a database name. The name is totally up to you. If it doesn't exist yet, it will be automatically created. So with that, we got the connection string set up. And when we now start this application, Nest.js should actually try to connect to our MongoDB server here. Now that's a nice first step, but of course, we can't do anything with that alone. Instead, we now need to add code that allows us to add data to the database or to fetch data from there. And since we're using the mongoose package, we'll use the mongoose package for that because as I mentioned, this mongoose package allows us to work with JavaScript object and it runs the database queries and sets them up behind the scenes. So we don't have to write all these queries manually. Instead, that's done for us, so to say. Now, for that, you need to understand how Mongoose works. And of course, you can check out the official docs to learn all about Mongoose. Mongoose works with so-called models, which are in the end blueprints for the JavaScript objects you then create, which are these enriched JavaScript objects, which represent your data, for example, a product object, which is not just a product object based on a class like this, which is just a bunch of properties. But instead, since Mongoose will help us create this object, it will be an object with a lot of behind the scenes magic that will run queries automatically and so on. Now, all these objects are based on these Mongoose models. And these models, on the other hand, are based on Mongoose schemas. And a schema simply defines how a model should look like regarding the properties it has. So therefore, in this product model file, I'll now actually add a new thing. And we'll add such a schema. And for that, we'll first of all import everything as Mongoose from the Mongoose package. And there we will now use mongoose.schema. Now I want to store and export this schema and I'll name it product schema. And this will be the blueprint for the model, which then is the blueprint for the concrete objects, but that's just how mongoose works. And there we create a new mongoose schema. So that's a constructor. And now here we pass a JavaScript object where we define how a product object should look like. And we're setting this up for mongoose, so to say. Now, of course, we'll have the same properties as down there, except for the ID, because we actually don't need the ID. We'll have an ID, which will be automatically generated by mongoose and mongodb. So we'll only focus on the three other properties. We'll have a title now without public, because this is now a JavaScript object literal here. This is not a class we're defining with the help of TypeScript. So we can't add public here. Instead, this is a title. And now for Mongoose, there's something special. You also have to define the type of data this is. But you don't do this with these TypeScript types because Mongoose doesn't use TypeScript. Instead, you do that with the default JavaScript types. Therefore, of course, it supports different types than TypeScript does. And they're also sometimes written a bit differently. For example, they're written uppercase. So if that's a string, we have to define it with string like this and not string like this. This is the TypeScript type. This is a JavaScript type. Now, besides the title, we'll have the description, which of course is a string, and then the price and the price is a number, but with a capital N. Now for mongoose, you can also be a bit more detailed than that. You could pass an object instead of just a type name and there add a type property, which describes the type. And then in addition, for example, you could set required to true to indicate that this is a required field, which always has to be provided. And I will actually do that for all three fields here. Now we have our product schema and that's an important step because now we can create a product model based on that schema. Now we do have a product model down there, but this is not the model we'll continue to use. And I'll come back to that in a second. Instead, now we go to our products module and there we can now add a imports array because you set up a mongoose model with the help of mongoose module. So again, we import 
mongoose module from at nest.js mongoose like that. And then here in the import, now of the products model, not of the app model, I will set up mongoose module dot for feature and then pass some data here. Now, the idea here is that this will automatically allow us to then inject this model into any file that needs it. So you can share this model which you're creating with the help of dependency injection. That is what Mongoose module does for you. It creates that model and makes it injectable. It takes an array because you could define multiple models which are available for injection in this module, so in this products module. But here I'll only have one. Each model then is defined with a JavaScript object where you give that model a name. Name is up to you, but of course it should make sense for the data you're managing. So here I'll name it product, and that has to be a string. And then you have to point at the schema that defines how the data should look like for this model. And that of course is our product schema here. And for that you need to import product schema from the product model file. So with that set up, we're defining this model, we're making it injectable with the help of Mongoose. Now we can inject it into files where we want to work with it. And that would be the product service, of course, because here we are, for example, creating a new product. And right now we're doing this with our own model. This will now change and we'll use the Mongoose model because that will allow us to create JavaScript objects, but magical JavaScript objects, so to say, where we can then also call a simple method to write it to the database and have Mongoose do the heavy lifting for us. So all we have to do here is add a constructor because as I just said, we can inject these models, these Mongoose models. And to inject this model, we now need to again import something from nest.js mongoose. So from at nest.js mongoose, we're importing, and there we're importing the inject model decorator in the end, which it is. You can use this in the constructor, at inject model. And this simply tells nest.js that you want to inject a mongoose model. To inject model, you pass a string, and that is the name of the model you want to inject here. And that's, of course, product here, because I defined that product should be the name of my mongoose model here in the products module. We have the product model set up here. We can inject it here. Now, you can store this in any argument you want, like product model. But I also want to use the TypeScript shortcut of automatically storing this in a property by adding an accessor in front of it. And we can also add the read-only modifier here to make it really clear that we will never overwrite the value which is stored in the product model property here. Now this also has a type and this type is of type model, which you have to import. You import that directly from Mongoose. So not from Nest.js Mongoose, but from just Mongoose, you import model. And model actually is a generic type because model is that base class Mongoose uses, which holds all the magic for running the queries. The concrete model then also needs to take your schema into account. So what you pass here is now a description of how your model looks like. And that's something we're missing. We're defining our schema here, but that's not really a TypeScript thing here. That's, as I said, just set up for Mongoose using JavaScript types and so on. But we do have our own model here. Now we could turn this into an interface instead of a class. The difference is that we now can't have a constructor. We can't instantiate interfaces. An interface is simply a, a type description, if you will. And therefore here we would now just have our properties like this. So we can add all of that, get rid of public here. And now to find an interface like this, an ID will be auto-generated in the end, and whilst this technically will be stored in an underscore ID property, there will be an ID getter later, which allows us to get uh, the ID with just the ID key, and that will return a string, so that getter. So we should have this as a product object, which Mongoose creates for us. And now in the product service here, in the generic type for model, we can therefore refer to product, and simply import product from product model as we're doing it before. Now we're injecting this product model, which is uh, created by Mongoose, and now we can start using it. And let's start using it for creating a new product. Now here we're creating a new product by calling new product. Now this should now be new, this product model. 
Looks a bit strange, but product model is a property, hence we have to use this. And then we can use it as a constructor. Again, it's created by Mongoose and what Mongoose in the end creates here is a constructor function. And that's basically the same as a, a class or uh, follows the same idea. And therefore we can call this or use this with the new keyword to create a new object based on this blueprint created by Mongoose behind the scenes. Now to product model, we don't pass four different arguments though. Instead, we pass a JavaScript object which should provide the fields we define in our schema. So a title, description and price, not an ID because that will be generated automatically. So we don't need to create our own ID here. Instead, we provide title here and title will of course hold the title value which we're getting. We do the same for description which gets the desk value and price which gets the price value. If you want, you can shorten these assignments here where the key name and the value uh, name is the same. You can then use a TypeScript shortcut here and in the end omit this value assignment behind the scenes. This will be expanded to this syntax, but it's a bit shorter for you to write. So with that here, I'm setting up title, description and price on this model. I'm creating a new object based on this model, which is stored in new product. Now we're no longer going to push this to some local array here. Instead, we can now use new product and to save it to the database, all you have to do is call save. This save method was never defined by us. It is provided by Mongoose instead. And that's what I meant. It's this magic behind the scenes. Since Mongoose creates this model, it does not just wrap our schema, but add these extra magic methods to it. And these extra magic methods like save will create a full MongoDB query behind the scenes, which saves our data to the database. Now, of course, here we want to return the product ID though. And for that, it's important to know that save in the end will return a promise. So here we can use then or use async await, which is what I'll do. Simply add the async keyword and set in front of insert product. Now we can await this. In case you don't know that syntax, it's an alternative to using then here in the end. It makes the code more look more like a normal synchronous code. It's still using promises. Insert product now will also implicitly return a promise. We can add async in front of here and therefore use the await keyword to wait for this promise to complete before the next line executes. Behind the scenes, the code after this line simply gets wrapped into an invisible then block here. So here I await the result and then I get my, well, result here. And for the moment, I'll not return anything here, but instead I'll simply console log result so that we can see what's in there. And actually it will return something, but I'll return a hard coded string for now, which is of course not the ID we're getting back. With all of that, let's give it a try. And we can run this with npm run start colon dev to bring up that development server. Let's see whether that works the way it should work. So it's trying to connect and it's having issues here connecting. Reason for that is on MongoDB Atlas, setting up the user is one thing. You also need to make sure that you whitelist your local IP. You have to whitelist your local IP. If you're not doing that, then MongoDB Atlas will block access from your IP. That's a security mechanism. So make sure that under network access, you add your local IP. And then wait for these changes to be active before you try again. In the meantime, I'll already bring up Postman here because we'll of course need Postman to send post requests to create a new product, for example. Here, I already got it prepared. It's the same post request I sent in the last uh, video. So I got it prepared. This is now also finished. Now uh, let's try running this again. Now it should be able to connect to MongoDB Atlas. And yeah, that's looking way better. This is up and running. Now let me send that post request. I sent this, I get back no ID, which kind of makes sense. What I do get here in the console looks promising though. I get this object being printed. And there we see our data and we see underscore ID, which I mentioned before is this auto generated ID stored in that underscore ID field. And if we now have a look into our database here in MongoDB Atlas under clusters, collections, you can also download MongoDB Compass and connect that to your cluster if you can't access the collections like this. 
But there I can look into my databases and into the data store there. And there, if I go to the Nest.js demo, there's the products collection. It has one document, so that looks good because we, in, we entered one document. And there indeed I see the document I just added. So saving works. And as you see, we had some initial setup, but now it's really simple. It's just this call of the save method. Now we also know we're getting back a result. There we have the ID and underscore ID, but as I mentioned, the result will actually also have an ID getter. So what we can return here is result.id in the end, because we know that this ID field will be available. So now if I save this again, and I give this another try with a first product, this is our first product, and send this, I still get back ID nothing here, so we still have a problem. Let's have a look at the controller. We should be getting our generated ID, but yeah, there is one issue, and it's, it might be tricky to spot. As I explained, save returns a promise, right? And I'm using async await. This makes the code look like it's synchronous code, but it isn't. As I said, the line after this line is simply wrapped into a then block. Now, since we return here, returning inside of a then block typically wouldn't return for the overall function. So what happens here is that this technically here returns a new promise, which the overall function returns. And that overall promise will then yield the data you return here. So this overall function returns a promise, hence in the controller where we reach out to insert product, insert product now returns a promise. We also see that here. Now, since this returns a promise here, we have to handle this either with then or by also using async await here, and I'll do the latter. So add async here, and then await this, and now we get this back because now this will wait for this promise to complete. Before it didn't wait, it did send the response immediately before this promise completed, which is why we had no ID in there. So that's an important adjustment. And now one other adjustment I'll make is in the product service, TypeScript isn't fully able to understand what insert product yields in the end. It's a promise, but it doesn't know which data this promise resolves to. And we know that it, of course, will resolve to a string. So what we could do here is we could add as string here. And now we would have the correct type inference here, which uh, definitely improves our code a little bit. So with that, let's save it and let's give it one more try. Let's do a second test with a second product here. And if I send this, now we get back the newly generated ID here. So this is now looking better. And if we have a look at our collection and we refresh this here, now we see three documents in there. So that's how we can save data. What about getting data? In the products controller, we have get all products and that's what I wanna start with. So we need to work on get products in the product service. Get products before just returned our array now that's of course too simple because now it's not just about returning an array. Instead, now we want to return, um, well, the result from our database. Now again, for this, we can work with this product model. So with this product model, but now we don't create a new object based on it, but this model being created for us by Mongoose also has some magic static methods. For example, the find method, which allows us to, well, find data. So now find will also get us some data and find also should yield a promise. So let's again use async and await and let's see what our result here is. Let's console log it so that we can get an impression. So let's console log result here. Go back to get and get all our data. Now here we get an empty array, of course, because we haven't adjusted the other logic, but in the console here, we indeed see an array with three documents. So that's looking good. Now, since we know that result is that array, products looks like a more fitting name here. You can, of course, name this whatever you want. And I don't want to log it, but I want to return it. So here, I want to return my array of products in the end. Now, one important adjustment, by the way, Find does work like this, but actually does return a real promise. It only does so if you call exec after this. It's a tiny improvement, which I would recommend doing. Works otherwise as well, but this gives you a real promise and therefore um, simply is a, a bit better. So now we still get our products. Here we could now return 
this product array, which we just fetched. We don't need to copy it anymore because it's created uh, anew here anyways. It's a fetch from database and a new product array is created here. So no real need to copy it. We're not managing it here in memory. So we can return our products. And in the products controller where we get all products, this now of course also yields a promise promise of type any, because again, it's not able to infer what products looks like. Uh, we, can, we can be clearer here. We know that it's a product array. So product is my own interface here, which describes how a single product looks like, and that's an array of products. So now TypeScript knows that get products returns a promise, which eventually yields a list of products, an array of products. So in the products controller, since this now returns a promise, which eventually gives us the products array, this has to be async, or you can always, of course, use then and uh, return a promise here. But here I'll go with async, and then I'll await my products here, and then simply return products like this. Now let's see whether that works the way it should. If we save this, and I resend this request, now I get back my products here. Now one tiny adjustment, you see the ID is stored in underscore ID and we have this strange we thing here and I actually would like to have ID here instead of underscore ID. That's relatively easy to do. Here in the service we can transform the data we're turning a little bit so that it really fits our product description because now our product interface we're saying that a product has ID field, not underscore ID and then only title description price. And whilst it technically works even if we have the extra underscore we thing and a different ID name. It's not really what I want to have. So let's go back to the service and let's transform the data before we return it. We can do that here by calling products map because product is a, an array. So we can call the built-in map method, which is provided by JavaScript. This takes a function which it runs on every element in this array, which we get as an argument therefore, and we have to return a new element. And that new element here should be a new object which should adhere to our uh, product interface or which should uh, basically be based on our product interface. So I wanna have an ID. We get that from prod by calling ID. As I said, there is a getter which gives us that ID. Um, it's not a property, but a getter which Mongoose gives us on these object it returns. Then I wanna have a title and that is prod.title. And uh, I should wrap this here in brackets, by the way. To have a valid syntax where we just return an object in this inline arrow function. Then we have a description with prod.description and we have a price with prod.price. So now I'm mapping the data we're fetching from the database into this new format which I then return. And now if we save that and we fetch our data again, now we see we have just ID here and we don't have that underscore underscore the thing. A minor thing, but still uh, definitely something that makes sense here, I guess. So with that, let's move on. Let's make sure we can also fetch a single product. For that, we have to get single product method, of course. We don't call this find product anymore, or we might, but uh, in this find product, we definitely don't want to find a product in our array anymore, in our local array, but instead we want to find a product in the database. And actually we don't really need find product like this because the, the index and so on, that's not something uh, we really need here. So I will change this. This will now just return a product, nothing else. And for that up here where we get our product, I wanna reach out or I wanna use this product model again, this model created by Mongoose and there again, find, but now of a slight variation of that, find one. Find one is an extra method that exists for cases where you know that you really need only one item. That allows Mongoose to not scan all your items in the database, but stop after it found the first one. Now found the first one, that's something I'm saying because now we'll add a condition to find one. We could have added one to find as well, to only find products with a title of something or with a price of something. And you can learn all about the different ways of writing queries and writing conditions in my MongoDB course if you want. Link to that also below the video. But here we'll have a very simple condition. We'll find one, we'll find one by ID. For that, Mongoose actually has an even better uh, method. We can use find by ID 
which is a method provided by Mongoose, where we just pass in the ID, which we're getting as an argument here, and then Mongoose will find us this element in the database and return it. Now, of course, this is asynchronous, so let's add the async keyword and then await the result here. And therefore here we don't return a product, but in the end, uh, a promise which yields a product. The correct type description would be this. And uh, here we get our data. Now, if product is not defined thereafter, we still can throw this exception, still makes sense at this point here. But here, of course, I'll now just return product though. Now, just as before, the product we're fetching would look a bit different. It would have underscore ID and so on. So let's actually return a new object here where ID is product.id, title is product.title, description is product.description, and price is product.price. And now what we have here is again a transformed uh, object which looks like our product interface. So that's the find product helper method. We can now use that here in insert, uh, not an insert, excuse me, in get single product, of course, this find product, we no longer need to access the first element of the return data because we're not returning a, a tuple or an array anymore, we're returning a promise instead. So instead of accessing this, which has to go, let's rather turn this into an async method so that we can use await here to find a product, store that in product and then return it. No need to copy it first, we can do it like this. And uh, yeah, that should be good. Now to avoid errors for the moment down there, uh, I'll comment out the code in update product so that we can save and test this without the app crashing. So let's give it a try. Let's try fetching a single product. And for this, we can copy such an ID here and then go to this get method where we fetch a single product, enter the ID and hit send. That's looking good. Now let's try an ID which doesn't exist by simply modifying this slightly and we get an error here. Now we're getting this error because cast to object ID failed at part ID for model product. In the end, the problem here is that find by ID expects a valid mongoose ID. And this isn't a valid mongoose or a valid MongoDB ID. And it can already tell that this is not valid. So what we should do here is we should wrap this into a try catch block to catch such errors as we're having it here and then handle it. For example here, to still throw our own not found exception, to return a better error message instead of have our server crash. Now, of course, that means that product isn't always set. So let's set product to a variable here and override it here in try catch so that even after this try catch block, we always have a product. It might just be undefined, which we're handling here. And now let's try saying this request again. And now we get a 404 error. Now let's try using a valid MongoDB database, but still one which doesn't exist. And we get a 404 error in this case as well. And for a valid ID, we still get the product. So fetching single products and handling errors also works. Let's now move on to the next method, which is for updating a product. Now for updating a product, I'm calling update product in my service and then update product in the service in the end, what we're doing is we're first of all fetching the product from the database or thus far from the local array, but now we'll have to fetch it from the database. And then we can edit this product and save it back to the database. That's the plan. Updating is super simple with Mongoose. First of all, for that, you fetch your item. So in this case, our product. And here we can simply use our find product helper method where we pass the ID, which is the product that we're extracting here. Now, of course, find product returns a promise. So we could add a then block or add async and then await this. And now we have our product here. Now that's nice. We, we got our product in, in this case here. Now we want to update this product. And now updating is really simple. In Mongoose, we can simply edit this product object here by overriding the data we want to override and then just saving it back to the database. So we got our product here. Previously, we copied that. Now there is no real need because this is a newly created object anyways. It fetches the data from the database and creates a new object. So no need to copy it. Instead, I'll name it updated product, remove this line here. And now we're editing the updated product. And now what I meant is that we just have to say updated product save. At least normally we could. Here the problem is 
that find product in the end does not return the mongoose object which is created here, but our own object which adheres to our product description. Now that's not really what I want to have here because, well, this doesn't have a save method and indeed it doesn't. So to still use this helper method, what I'll do here is I'll not return my own product here, but I'll instead just return the product which Mongoose fetched and created here because it will be that object that has all our data, but that also has this Mongoose magic behind the scenes. So here we don't want to return a promise with, with our product as we define it here, just this interface, but instead we kind of need to let TypeScript know that our product here has these properties, but is actually based on the Mongoose model class, so to say. So on the base class every Mongoose model has. And right now TypeScript doesn't know this, but to let it know we can install one extra package here with npm install dash dash save dev, and that's the add types mongoose package. This adds type annotations for mongoose and helps us with working with this mongoose package. With that added, here on our interface we can add extend and extend mongoose.document. Now extends is a keyword you might know from classes. In TypeScript you can also extend interfaces and this means that our interface here is based on this base interface here. Document is an interface provided by mongoose, hence mongoose.document. We're importing everything under this mongoose package up there. And then we extend this mongoose document interface and we add our own properties to it. And with this adjustment made in the product service, we got rid of this save error because now it's clear to TypeScript that updated product isn't yet based on a constructor on this model, which has our own data, description, title, and price, but which also has all these mongoose magic methods and properties. And now for get single product, we need to make a slight adjustment to return proper data. I'll do the conversion here and set this to product ID, title to, to product title, description to product description, and price to product price. So now I'm converting that data here and get single product. And an update product, now find product returns us a mongoose model object in the end. And now updated product, which we get from find product, which is our helper method, is such an object created by mongoose. Therefore, it wraps our data, but it also has the mongoose helper methods. And therefore, now we can call save. And now mongoose automatically tracks all the changes we did. So for example, that we maybe changed the title or maybe changed the description or all of that. And then when we call save again, it won't enter a new document. But since we're doing this on an existing one, which already has an ID, which was fetched from the database, since we're doing this on an existing one, it will update the existing one in the database. And now save will automatically send the right query to write that update to the database. So if we save this, let's quickly check if getting a single product still works. Yes, it does. And now let's use that ID here together with patch to update a product. So here I want to update this product with a first test. This is a first product. And the new data I send is an updated title and a new price. So let's hit send here. And um, I get OK. I forgot something, of course. Update product returns a promise now because we're using async await. Hence in the controller, we should also, in update product, either use then or add async here and then await this before we return anything, but we would have returned null anyway. So this is still a correct change to make so that we only send a response once this is done and not too early, especially if this should crash, we would otherwise send two responses, which isn't a good idea. But to see whether it worked, let's go to the collection and let's refresh our database in our collection here and load documents again. And what we see is that the title was updated and the price as well. Now let's see what happens if we try this on a document that doesn't exist. We get a 404 error, that makes sense. And if I update a different product, let's say this one, a third test, which still has a third test as a title in the database. If we send an update there, so for this ID, and I change the description, this is a brand new 
description. Can I send this? This looks okay. Now let's reload our documents here and see whether that worked. This is a brand new description. So that worked. We can of course also validate it here by getting that single product and we see it here as well. So this is all working. The missing piece is removing a product. There we call delete product in the service. So let's go to the service to delete product. Here we find a product because we needed the index of the product to then remove it from our array. Now this will be done in a totally different way, of course. We'll still work with promises, so let's add async. And let's now use our product model again. And on that product model here, we can now call delete one to delete one element. And there we have to pass in a filter criteria, which is a JavaScript object where you would define the key by which you want to filter, like the ID, and then the value for that key, in this case, prod ID, of course. And this, of course, returns a promise, promise at least if we call a exec behind it. It works without that as well, but a bit better. Should also do that here on find by ID, by the way. And now we're waiting for this to be deleted. Then here we don't really have to return anything, just want to, well, wait for this to finish in the end. This should now delete a product where the ID is like product ID. And in the products controller, here under remove product, we should now also add async and await this operation and then we can return now. So let's uh, get a single product like this one here. That still works. And now let's send a delete request for that ID like this. So that looks good. If I now go back and I try to get data for that single product, that still works though. And if I refresh here, nothing was removed. The reason for that, oh yeah, is ID. Now ID, as I said, is a getter we can use on that object mongoose creates for us to get the ID stored in a database. In the database, it's stored on underscore ID though. So we should also use underscore ID here, not ID, because here we have to use the key as it's stored in the database. So let's try that again with underscore ID in delete product. Send this request again and it works. And if I now refetch this, now we get not found, which makes more sense because now if we update this here, we shouldn't find the data here either. Now what you might have noticed is that before when we had the, the wrong criteria here, we still weren't made aware of this, right? So that this succeeded is not something uh, we found out or we didn't find out that it failed actually. So it would be nice, of course, to return an error if it fails. For that, let's get the result and console log the result to get an idea of what we're getting back when this fails, for example. So here in delete product, I'm logging the result. And now if I try to delete that same product, which I just deleted, which therefore isn't there anymore, here we get a 200 response, which doesn't make that much sense. But in the response, but in the result we're getting here, we see we get a little bit of output and uh, we find information about the operation which was done. For example, there we have a deleted count, which is zero, or generally n, which is the number of affected documents, which is zero. And if on the other end I use another document, like this one, which does exist, and I delete this, then you will see that in the log we have deleted count one and also n one. So this is our indicator for whether something was deleted or not. So here we can check if result n is greater than zero, then we know it succeeded, or if it's equal to zero, then we know it failed. So here we could then throw a new exception, the new not found exception again, because it probably failed because we didn't find a product. So I will throw this if we didn't find a product so that we return a correct error message if, well, we indeed failed to delete the product. So let's save that and now rerun that query for that product which doesn't exist anymore. And now we get 404. And now if I delete my last product, which should still exist, whoops, and I use this as ID, here we get 200. And if I try it again, because now it was deleted, we get 404. If I now get all products, we should get nothing because, well, there are no products anymore. So that is how you can 
store or manage your data with the help of MongoDB. It also means that in the product service, we can of course get rid of that private products array, which we now don't need anymore. And I hope that it's clear how you now generally can work with MongoDB here with the help of Mongoose from inside of your Nest.js application. In general, whatever you learn about MongoDB and Mongoose can be used in the same way here in Nest.js. The most important difference to a normal Node Express app is regarding how you set up your schema and more importantly your model with for a feature and that you can then simply inject your model and then work with it. You could also work with Mongoose just as you know it from Node Express, manage everything manually instead of using injections on and that would also work. But of course, if you have the tools, then this approach makes sure you stay more in the Nest.js world and that is never a bad thing. I hope this was helpful. Definitely share your thoughts and ideas in the comments. I hope you liked this video. Bye.